I work I work at a, a real estate company as a data analyst. Um, so I work with data on daily basis and I do know the importance of a well-organized data set. So I'm glad that this chapter is exactly about that. Uh, today we're going to discuss chapter 12 and it's on tidy data. Uh, so tidy data is um, just a format that helps us to organize data set in a clean and tidy way. Uh, it does require some upfront work, but it uh, does pay off later. Lots of data analysts say that 80% of working with data is just cleaning it and tidying it up and then and then you start analyzing it. So, um, so we are gonna need the tidy R package, uh, which is a part of a bigger tidyverse. Um, so if you don't have it, you can install the tidyverse and then load it. Um, tidyverse is just a collection of packages uh, that are good for working with um, data sets and it includes ggplot and duplier. We, we probably held, uh, you've probably already heard of those packages and tidyr is um, one of those packages as well. Um, so let's talk about uh, why do we need to have tidy data? Well, um, with tidy data and tidy tools, you'll need less time manipulating data from one presentation to another, allowing you to spend more time on analytic questions at hand. And also if you have a consistent data structure, it's easier to learn the tools that work with, uh, with it because they have underlying uniformity. So in tidy diverse, lots of tools that um, the packages have, they're designed exactly to work with the tidy data. Um, and most built-in R functions work well with ve uh, vectors of values uh, that makes transforming tidy data feel particularly nature natural. Um, so um, there, are, um, there are three rules that need to be satisfied in a data set in order uh, for us to be able to call it tidy data. Uh, the first one is um, each variable must have its own column, um, as you can see here. Uh, the second one is each observation must have its own row, and then each value must have its own cell. Uh, these uh, three rules um, seem very natural and very simple, but um, you will be surprised like the amount of data sets that you will encounter in real life that does not satisfy all these three rules. And the main reason why is that uh, usually even at my company, the people that collect the data and people who analyze it are two different people. So uh, it could be easier to collect data in a different format and then easier to analyze it in a tidy data format. So um, a lot of the data sets are quite messy in real life. Uh, so here I have examples of uh, data sets. Uh, actually, this is the same data set, but they are organized in four different ways in four different tables. Um, the data set is uh, the number of um, shows the number of tuberculosis cases and population uh, in Afghanistan, Brazil, and China in 1999 and 2000. Um, so you can see that in table one we have. Um, four different columns, country, year, cases, population. And then table two shows the exact same data, but it is organized in a different way. So instead of cases and population here, we have type uh, and then cases and population are the values of the type column. And then we have accounts uh, that shows how many cases there was and how big the population was. Um, the same goes with table three and four. The data is same, but organized in a different way. So for example, here in table one, we have cases and population in two different columns, but in table three, we have just one column that's called rate. And then we have um, cases and population in the same cell. And then table four actually is split into two different tables. The first table shows the number of cases in two different years in these countries, and then table 4B shows uh, the population. So I have a question for you, which one of these four tables, uh, according to these rules, do you think is tidy data, represents tidy data? The first one? Yeah, or that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually it is the first one, because it's the only one that um, has in, in which the each variable has its own column, each observation has its own row, and each uh, value must have it has its own cell. 
So like, for example, table three is not tidy because we have two different variables in the same cell. So not each value has its own cell. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in table two, it is not tidy because we have um, each variable doesn't have its own column. Um, and then um, here we have uh, variables as column names. So these three are not tidy. And so the chapter discusses how to turn these three tables into um, tidy data, but um, tidy data sets. But before we do that, I'll show you some examples of why it is good to have um, data in this format. So let's go to R. I'm gonna load my tidyverse. Uh, so one of the exercises, I'm not gonna do all the exercises that was in the chapters, but I wanted to mention some of them. Um, so the first one asked us to compute the rate for table two uh, and table four. I'm just gonna do table two. Um, um, so let's look at table two. So here we have cases and we have a population and we wanna calculate rate. So cases divided by population and multiplied by 10,000 because 10,000 was, um, the cases are represented uh, per 10,000. So what we have to do here is add another row for each observation. So we would have to add, for example, here, Afghanistan 1999 rate, and then uh, the value would be number of cases divided by population and multiplied by 10,000. So to do that, first, uh, we need to create separate tables for cases and population, because here we have them together. Uh, this code does that. Um, so if we look at T2 cases, we only extracted cases from this data set and created a new data set. Uh, I'm gonna do the same for population. So T2 population would be the same data set, but just with the population. Uh, now we have to um, create a new data frame with the population and cases columns and calculate the rate in a new column. So as I told you, the rate is calculated by cases divided by population and multiplied by 10,000. Um, I'm gonna do that. So T2 rate, let's look at it. So now I have a third table in which I only have rates. And then the next operation I would have to do is store this new variable in the appropriate location in this initial table. So init this is what initial table looks like. And then this code is gonna add rate in the appropriate places. So we can see it added the third row for each observation with um, type rate and then um, the appropriate value here. I didn't go into too many specifics of the code because um, it's supposed to show you how inefficient this code actually is. Um, well, one thing to note here is um, uh, here in the original data set, we had integers uh, for count, uh, but then we added rate, which was not an integer. So it changed the entire column type here. So this is why the um, numbers are depicted, depicted differently here. Uh, this is how to add rates into a non-tidy data set, uh, which is, um, it took this many lines of code to do that. Uh, but if we had a tidy data set, which we do, in this case, it's table one, and it looks like this, uh, we would only need to do this one line of code to do the exact same operation here. So uh, I'm going to run this code, and it just edit here, right here. So what this did I use I used the mutate function, which is part of tidyverse. Um, I told it to add a new column named rates, and then um, the values would be calculated by cases divided by population multiplied by ten thousand. So in this case, in case of tidy data, I only needed one line of code to do that. Um, so all pa packages in tidyverse are designed to work with tidy data and. These are some other examples of that, how easy it can be to work with tidy data in tidy data set, in tidyverse. Um, for example, if we wanted to calculate the total number of cases each year, we could use the count function here. So I'm telling, um, I'm using count function and telling it to um, calculate uh, to some of the cases um, per year. And I got 
the answer here. So in 1999, we had 250,000 cases. And in 2000, we had 296,000 cases. Uh, we can, ggplot works equally as well with tidy data. So we could plot the change over time here and, oops, this does not look good or here, yeah. So it's quite simple to work with tidy data in tidyverse so using tidy tools and it just requires just a couple of lines of code or even one line of code um, and it makes everything very easy. So now let's actually talk about how to transform non tidy data into tidy data format. Uh, one very useful tool is pivoting. So when you do pivoting first you have to figure out what the variables and observations are in your data set. And then you have to figure out what the problem is. So two common problems, uh, very common problems in data sets is uh, usually one variable might be spread across multiple columns or one observation might be scattered across multiple rows. So to fix these two problems, there are two, like some of the most useful functions in TIDR, private longer and private wider. Um, so let's look at private longer. <clears throat> So as I said, a common problem in data sets is where some of the column names are not names of variables, but values of variables. So for example, in our example, uh, table four, both table four A and four B, they had um, years as column names, 1999 and 2000, but in actuality, both uh, 1999 and 2000 are just values of a year variable. Um, so we can create a completely new row um, no, completely new column, excuse me, name it year, and then uh, use 1999 and 2000 as their values, as its values. Um, so to use pivot longer, we need to identify three things. Uh, the first one is um, the set of columns whose names are values, not variables. So in our case, as I said, it's these two <clears throat> um, columns. Uh, then we have to identify the name of the variable to move the column names to. So in our case, it would be year. We would create a new column, name it year. And then, um, and then we have to identify the name of the variables to move the column values to. So these values that these two columns create um, um, hold, uh, we are going to create a new column, uh, name it cases, and we're going to move all these values here in appropriate um, cells. So let's see how that works in R. Um, so let's look at table for A. So this is what it looked like. And then we are gonna use a pivot longer um, function. Uh, first, we're gonna specify the names of the columns that we want to transform. So in our case, it was 1999 and 2000. Uh, notice that we have to use uh, these spec ticks here. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to recognize the column names when it's a number. Uh, so we're going to uh, specify these column names, and then we're going to tell the function to move these names into a new column uh, named the year. And then we want to move its values into a new column named cases. So I'll do that. And here you can see we have a new table. And um, 1999 and 2000 are the values of this new year column. And then we have um, respective cases here in a new column. We can do the same thing for table for B. Instead of uh, TB cases, we have population here. Uh, it will have the same structure. Uh, and also we can use the left join function to join these two tables together. So. This is the same thing I just did. I'm just gonna name the tables tidy for A and tidy for B. And then I'm gonna use left join uh, tidy for A comma tidy B to join these two tables together. So now you can see that we have um, a new table that contains all the information. So before we had it, before we had this information spread into two tables, but uh, now we unified it into one, and then it's a, a tidy data because um, it satisfies all the three rules that tidy data should satisfy. Um, so now another useful function, as I mentioned, is pivot wider. Um, well, 
also I wanted to mention that it's called pivot longer that because it makes the data set actually longer. So you can see that the original was um, a bit shorter and then the transformed one is twice longer. So that's an easy way to remember the function name. Um, uh, so another function that are used to pivot wider, it is used when an observation is scattered across multiple rows. So uh, in our case, uh, the table two was like that. Um, uh, you can look at table two here. We have, um, so one observation would be Afghanistan in 1999, for example, and then another observation would be Afghanistan in 2000. So here you can see that we have two rows for one observation. So we have two rows for Afghanistan in 1999, and then we have two rows for Afghanistan in 2000. So uh, the same observation is spread into two different uh, rows that makes the data set not tidy, and we want to fix that. Um, so to use pivot wider, we have to identify the column to take variable names from. So in this, in our case, it's type. So we are gonna, from table two type column, we're gonna take the values here, case and population, and we're gonna make them new column names. And then uh, we are gonna identify um, the column to take values from. So in our case, it would be, um, it would be count. So from count column, I'm gonna take out these values and I'm gonna put it in appropriate cells according to the new column names, cases and population. So this is the representation of what pivot wider does. It makes takes the data set and makes it wider by uh, adding the column names, the col columns. So in R, um, I'm gonna take table two. Let's look at what it looks like again, sorry. This is what it looks like. And then I'm gonna um, use pivot wider function. Uh, I'm gonna specify, uh, so names underscore from equals type uh, specifies that I wanna take um, uh, the values from type column and make them column, new column names. And I'm gonna take values from count. So let's run that. And this is what our um, new table looks like, which is um, the exact same as table one. Um, so it is a tidy data. It's in a tidy data format. Um, so, so far we have transformed the table, table two and table four into tidy data, but we also have to transform table three. But table three is, um, has a slightly different problem. Um, so in table three, we had, uh, it, was, it wasn't satisfying the third rule, which is that each value must have its own cell. So here we have two values that have the same cell. So number of cases. So in the first row, uh, 745 is number of cases of tuberculosis, and the number that comes after the slash sign is a population. And we want to separate this. So we can use the function separate. That's also in tidyr. And so separate function uh, pulls apart one column into multiple columns by splitting wherever a separator character appears. So by default, separate uh, will split values where it sees a non-alphanumeric character. So in our case, non-alphanumeric character is this slash sign. It could also be a dash sign or a comma or an underscore. So wherever the function sees that there is not a letter or a number, it's going to take that place, uh, that symbol as a place where it should separate the cell. And it's going to take the red column and then separate it into two different columns, cases and population. So in R, um, let's look at table three here. Um, so here's the function. Uh, I'm gonna take table three and take a separate function. Uh, I'm gonna um, specify the column that I want to split, separate. So in our case, it's rate. And I'm gonna tell it to separate rate into these two columns. So I'm gonna mm, uh, specify the column names in, in the quote marks. Uh, so in my case, it will be cases and population. So let's run this. And now we have mm, two new columns with um, 
uh, that have uh, a value for its own cell. So we don't have two values in the same cell anymore. Um, so this data is tidy. So as I said, separate function by default separates where it is non-alphanumeric symbol. But if you wanted to specify a different symbol, you can do that by adding this sep argument into the function. So it is exactly the same function, but after specifying the column names, you can add comma sep equals whatever the character is. So in this case, I left the same character because it's going to do exactly the same thing. Uh, you could also, other than specifying the symbol that you want to separate it, you can also specify uh, the position where you want to separate it. So if you do sep equals, um, in this case I did two, um, it's going to separate it at, the, at that position, so at the second character. So let's do that. So here we are uh, using the function on table three again, but instead of rates, I'm separating year, uh, and I'm telling it to separate into new columns, century and year. So I'm gonna, well, assume it's not quite right, but I'm gonna assume that the first two characters I then uh, show century. So it will be 19th century, even though it's really 20th. And then um, uh, the last two characters would be in a year column. And I'm telling it to separate at the second position, so. It's separated into two new columns and it splits these four, character, um, four characters into two and two. So we have 19 in century and 99 in a year. In year. Um, yeah, also one thing to note here is that when I transformed, when I used separate function, um, so let's look at table, original table, table three again. Um, Uh, yeah, so when I transform, when I use separate function, um, you can see that here we have characters. So the types of these columns are characters, but that's not very useful because um, these are actually numbers. So if you wanted to use some other operations later, there could be some problems. So you wanna make sure that uh, you leave it in integers. So you can do that by in the same function, you can uh, add convert equals true and that argument makes sure that um, the types of the columns are um, whatever they are. So in this case, it's integer. Uh, another useful function is uh, unite. It's not used as often as the separate function, but um, it's also worthy to note. Um, unite is does the exact opposite of what separate function does. So if um, separate function separated the same cells into two, different columns, unite function takes two uh, cells from two different columns and unites them. Um, so let's look at what that looks like in R. So there's also a table five that we haven't looked at yet, but this is what it looks like. It has century and year columns, but we want to unite them in a year column. So we do that by uh, we, we're going to take table five. We're going to use unite function. Mm, so the first argument here, new, uh, is the name of a new column that we are trying to create. And then the first, the next two um, arguments here say, uh, specify the um, two columns that we want to unite. So in this case, it's century and year. I'm going to run this. So here we have a new column, which united these two in century and year columns. But you can see that we have underscore here. This is what unite function does by default. So if you unite two columns, it's going to have underscore. If you don't want that to happen, uh, you use sep argument again, and then you specify that you don't want a uh, separator. So if you run that, we have no underscore here anymore. Or if you wanted like a different separator, for example, a slash here, you can do that too. And then here we have 19 slash 99. So <clears throat> these are some of the tools that help you manipulate the data and then helps you to uh, transform them into tidy data. But um, other important thing to talk about is missing values because uh, when you pivot the rows and create new rows and the new columns, some missing values may appear. So it's important to discuss them as well. Um, 
a value can be missing in one of two possible ways, explicitly and implicitly. Explicit missing values are um, the ones that are marked with NA. So you can see, actually see that this value is missing, but uh, implicit missing values are the ones that are simply just not present in a data. So here in this table, uh, we have two missing values actually, uh, but we can only see one of them. The another one is, uh, would be year 2016, first quarter. So there are four quarters in a year, but in 2016, there are only three present. So there's actually one uh, missing value here that we cannot see. Um, but there are ways to um, see all the missing values that there are in a table or make all the missing values disappear if you don't want to, depending on what you're doing. Um, so let's look at this same table here that I had in the presentation. I'm gonna run this. Uh, stocks, this is what the table looks like. Um, so uh, the way you um, present the data sets um, can make implicit values explicit. Uh, for example, we can make implicit missing value explicit by putting years into columns. So uh, we can use the pivot wider uh, function that we already discussed. So we can make, uh, we can create new columns with these values here. So 2015 and 2016. Uh, I'm going to use the stocks table and then um, I'm going to draw names from year column and then I'm going to um, rearrange the values accordingly. So when I rearrange the values in this data sets, uh, in the, uh, when I created these new two columns, you can see that actually um, now you can see both missing values. So there is no more implicit missing values. So this, the first one, 2016 first quarter that says an A here was simply not present in the first version of this table. Um, because these explicit missing values may not be important in other representations of the data, you can set uh, this argument values drop NA equals true in pivot longer to turn explicit missing values implicit. So we have uh, this table here, which I created using pivot wider, and then I'm going to use pivot longer to um, take it back to the original form, except I don't want to see any missing values. So I'm going to use values underscore drop underscore NA equals true. Um, I'll run this and then it's the same exact table without any of the missing values. If you don't want to see missing values in the data set. So, um, but uh, if you do want to see all the missing values, um, you can use a function complete which ensures the original data set contains all those values and it fills in explicit NAs wherever necessary. So I'm gonna take the same table, I'm gonna use complete and I'm gonna tell it to complete according to year and um, the quarter. So if any of the quarters are missing, I'm gonna see that. And if um, years are missing, I'm gonna see that too. I'll run this, this is the original data, but now uh, in the original data, this uh, observation was uh, implicit. So I was not seeing NA in the first quarter of 2016, but here I can see both of the missing values. So they're both explicit now. Um, so another uh, important thing about uh, missing values is um, sometimes when a data source has primarily been used for data entry, missing values indicate that the previous value should be carried forward. So, for example, if I'm a data collect, if I'm collecting a data data and I'm calling different people and asking them questions, for example, how many treatments they had, what the response was. Uh, if I'm calling Derek Whitmore and I have to fill in info for three different treatments, I'm not going to rewrite Derek Whitmore three different times to save time. So that may be why some missing values appear in a data set and you can use, um, you can use the um, fill uh, function to carry on the um, first non-missing value into the uh, next missing value. So I'm going to create this table first. This is what the data looks like. I have two missing values and I wanna carry Derek Whitmore into these two. Uh, I'm gonna use the fill function. 
And you can see that this function filled in Derek Whitmore for the missing values here. <clears throat> Uh, so this was the main tools that the chapter discussed. But actually, in the end, there was some there was a case study that the chapter discussed. Um, uh, it's a real uh, real life data set. Um, and let's look at it. So uh, it's a WHO data, World Health Organization data. And it contains um, tuberculosis cases, again, uh, broken down by year, country, age, gender, and diagnosis method. And it's a 2014 um, data. So the, this is what the data looks like originally. So you can see that it's very messy. There's a lot of columns, a lot of missing values. Um, you can actually see that the first three rows represent the same thing. So we have Afghanistan, AF, and AFG. Those all three columns are to specify the country. Uh, we have a year, and then we have all these columns that we don't know what it means yet. Uh, but um, here is how we can make this data set tidy. Um, so we can uh, make uh, all these columns from new SPM 014 to new rel F65. Uh, we can assume that all these columns are actually values of a variable. Like in case of table four uh, that we did, we had years as uh, new column names, but they were actually variables. We can do the same here. We can use pivot logger and we're gonna specify columns uh, from new SPM 014 to new rel F65. So all these columns, we want them to mm, make them values of a one um, column. Uh, and I'm gonna uh, create this new column uh, named key. Um, uh, I'm gonna transform, I'm gonna put all the values that are here into a new column named cases. And I'm gonna tell it to drop all the uh, missing values. So there, are, as you can see, a lot of missing values. So it's not important for me now. So I'm just gonna uh, remove them. So this is what the new data set looks like. It's still not tidy, but we're getting there. Uh, so the second thing I wanna do is mm, here in key, we see that um, this is a code. So each um, section here, so new SP, M014 represents something. So a new represents if the, the tuberculosis cases are new cases or they're old cases. SP um, represents a smear positive. Um, there's also an SN which represents SN uh, smear negative. Uh, M and F here represents gender. Uh, so if it's a male or a female. And then the numbers here represent the age group. So from zero to 14 years. Uh, from 15 to 24 years and etc. So I want all these uh, things to be in separate columns because they all give me some information and each um, variable should have its own column for the data set to be tidy. But also if you look at the uh, column names here, um, it's not that easy to um, separate all of them quite yet because um, as you can see like rel here, uh, we have new then underscore we have EP, but in case of this new rel column name, we have new rel together. So there's no underscore. So we, I cannot uh, tell the function to separate it at an underscore underscore yet, because it's gonna uh, um, leave these two together. Rel stands for relapse. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an underscore into the column names that, con that start with new rel. Um, I'm going to create a new data set, call it who to, and I'm going to use the mutate function. I'm going to tell it to take uh, key, key values, the key column values here, and I'm going to tell it to um, change or replace all the new rels into new underscore uh, rels. So let's look at what it gives us. Well, you can quite see it yet because, yeah. But we changed it into a new underscore else. So now I can use the separate function um, to separate all these into different columns. So I'm gonna make another data set, who three. I'm gonna use separate function. I'm gonna tell it to separate all the key values 
into three different columns. It's gonna be, one of them is gonna be called new, one, the other one is gonna be type, and the other one is gonna be sex and age. So uh, one column is gonna have only, if it's a new case or an old tuberculosis case, the second column is gonna have uh, what type it was. So if it's a smear positive, smear negative, if it's a relapse or whatever it is. And then the third column is gonna have the gender and age together. And I'll, I'll specify to separate it at an underscore. So let's see what that gives us. So this is what I got here. This, this is what the new table looks like. Um, uh, so um, as you can see, uh, all the, um, uh, well, yeah, no, we can uh, count how many news there are. Um, in this um, table, you can see that there is 76,000 and we only have 76,000 um, observations. So all of them are new tuberculosis cases. So there is no point in having this column at all. So we can delete this column and we also can delete these ISO 2 and ISO 3 columns because they will specify the same thing as the first column does. So having them is just redundant. I can do that using this function. I'm going to uh, create a new table who for, uh, and I'm going to take this who three, and I'm just going to select all of those columns minus this new column, ISO two column, and ISO three column. Uh, so let's look at who for now. This is what it looks like, and then. Uh, yeah, well, I also have a column that has um, gender and the age group together. So there is two different values that are in the same cell, which makes our data untidy. I want to tidy it. So I'm just going to use the separate function again. Um, I can see that um, gender is specified by just, just one character, M and F. So I can tell the separate function to take this column sex age and then separate it into two different columns sex and age and i'm going to set the separator to be at one so after the first character you need to separate and this is what it gives us so i got the sex column that says m and f and then i have age column that gives us the age groups and now this is the data set that's tidy because uh, it satisfies these three rules that a tidy data set needs to have. Um, so yeah, I, I just did this all step by step, but uh, you can also do it all together. And it, it looks much simpler than all this. So this is the, this code does exactly the same thing that we just did, except I'm not creating new data sets all over again to just demonstrate. So yeah, I got the same thing here. So yeah, that's that was all. So if you have any questions, okay, feel free Thank to. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, does anyone have any mm -hmm. questions at the moment? Um, no, I or... just would like to compliment. It was really informative and really well organized presentation. Thank you, Maria, very much. No, thank you. <laughs> yes, it was very very well, and I think. It shows um, uh, quite quite clearly why tidy tidyverse and tidy data is such a big topic in in the R community and 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 so popular. It really makes uh, life uh, simpler. <laughs> yeah, actually, I did a presentation for our ladies a couple of months ago, which I uh, I'm I'm, not, I'm new to R as well, so I didn't know all this, and I remember um, I was I struggled a lot to just. Um, do mutate on some um, um, data sets. And now I just realized that if I, if only I had a tidy data, it would be so much simpler. I just didn't know about all these tools. So it's good to know now. Yeah, I think it's a very practical, uh, useful part of, of uh, learning R. I was just wondering maybe just a few questions um, in, in this last part. So, so when you were uh, doing the who data now and and using the string R um, package. So so basically, is that part of the tidyverse package set uh, because it's a separate package? I think. Um, 
Oh, I'm not sure. I I thought everything that I used was part of Thai DR because um, I mean Thai Diverse because it con does contain a lot of different packages. But I'm I'm not sure. I the only package that I well package collection that I loaded in the beginning of the session was Thai Diverse. So it's either must be the like core of our studio or yeah. Thai, part of Thai Diverse. But I'm not sure. Probably, yeah. And and then I was just wondering um, because you deleted these um, ISO two and ISO yeah. three, the, the AF and AFG. Um, for, so, I, but I was just thinking that maybe like if you need to use uh, the country information because they are shorter than the word Afghanistan, maybe in some cases it might be uh, yeah useful to use them. But I'm not. I mean, I don't know. It's, yeah. Well. It depends on what you're trying to do, like what your what your goal is. But in that case, you could just delete the full names Afghanistan and leave AF mm -hmm. because they both primarily they both um, uh, give you the same information. So yeah, I don't I don't see why you would left leave both because it takes up space. But um, well, it's up to you, I guess. Yeah, whatever you want to use. I agree, Mariam, that uh, so if we don't need information, we could delete it. But uh, one more thing. So um, most of the time, uh, keeping ISO codes are more useful because if you will need yeah. in the future to connect the data, it's less um, is it less risky to combine two data sets uh, using like a key field ISO code mm -hmm. rather than the full name of the uh, country. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. That, that's why just keeping the three letter ISO codes uh, are sometimes very useful, just if you in the future plan to combine that existing. Yeah, data. that's true, because you could just specify the number of characters instead of, yeah. Yeah, because uh, you also like if, if there are like different languages, um, in different languages, you write the country name in a different way. So, but I guess the ISO code is universal. So, so then yeah. it uh, makes life easier. <laughs> All right, thank you. Does anybody have any qu questions or comments about this section? No, I, I thought this I, could, uh, uh, if you can share this work, uh, our work. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to uh, Lily, and then she'll she can send it to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I would send. Just yeah. thank you. Just I think it was a really good presentation. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much, Maria, for this clear thank presentation.